Hello, my friends. Welcome to the recap of week 10 for Gman 4F. And let's first of all, let's check the table very briefly. As you can see, uh, Lizardmen are Lizardmen are still on top, but this week they got their first loss. That's that's a nice thing for the competition. Congratulations to the Dark Elves, Montaigne Blitz. They got a win against the Division top by far. Even they got a loss this week, they still got four points lead on the top of the table. They are still in a very good spot. Uh, ten matches are played, so there are still nine points can be taken by any team. So it is not over. We will see what will happen next week. Second position, we have the human team of War Demon. So far, that's a great result for them. It is very difficult to play with humans at this level, I think. And difficult. Uh, they are not very strong. They are not very fast. Have to play them good. Congratulations to War Demon. Having a great season so far. Only one loss, four draws, and five wins. Necromantic team, it's not very surprising to see them closer to the top. That's a very nice team, honestly. And they started to do season very bad, as far as I can remember. But currently, they are getting closer to the top. Anything can happen. Only five points difference with, 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 with the uh, division leaders then the and the points as you can see very nicely distributed after the first position 19 18 17 16 15 15 here there's another three points difference and this group also very close to each other anything can happen there is no risk of going you know do, to division down to the fifth division Worst case is again you will compete in the fourth division next season. So uh, I can understand if the bottom half of the table may be more protective, playing for more safety. That can be a good idea. That's not good for the competition, but you cannot complain if they if you play like that. That's understandable in a long season format like this in Rebel. And let's continue with the T Cold Wood Elves, 17 points. Mm, they are also in the pack in the division, in the division second position pack, let's say. High Elves, 16 points, Dreamland Gaming. Then Mountain Blitz got the win, a very critical win this week against the Lizard Man. And Ogres, of course, they got maybe this is the win of the match of the of the week ogres versus cast dwarves right and that's a fantastic win 433 for an ogre team it's a great great record congratulations i think uh, we can already count andy on as one of the best performance of the season obviously lizards are doing very well human team as i said i think performing very good and the uh, ogres then we have Rose back at 12 points. There are three teams Orcs, Kevin, and Nurgle, Kate Carr, Boronate. Uh, Nurgle got a draw against the humans this week. That's a nice result. And Chaos Dwarves lost this week and they lost the blocker too with a level, if I remember correctly. And um, probably that was a rough removal, removal wise roughly game for the Chaos Dwarves. We will check later the numbers. Hopefully we can comment about this. Then we have Dwarves 9 points, Goblin 8 points. And last but the most important aspect of our division, Chaos Team. Chaos Elves lurking with Lurky. Harvest Team. Coming with three points, they are looking for their first win. Hopefully, we will see very soon. Let's continue with the predictions. What happened? Who guessed what? For week 10, 
Uh, by the way, don't forget to fill your uh, week 11 table. For the week 10, uh, we have 19 points from War Demon. Very nice. Very nice. But there isn't any very good prediction result, I should say. But obviously, War Demon uh, deserves the first spot by 19 points. Very nice. And only one point for Harvey. He didn't guess some matches, it looks like. Could be much more better. Then 14 points for Hellenic and Andion. And I have 10 points this week. I have one extra week, but I'm afraid I will be passed by Hellenic and War Demon. <laughs> let's see, let's see. And how about the League of the Suffering? This week, numbers are very low. Not the lowest so far. The lowest one is 22. Let's make it yellow. But it is very close to the lowest. So uh, it was a bad week. And n the leader of the week is the Chaos Dwarfs. Seeing the Chaos Dwarf leading this week, it's a very interesting. You can, you can understand goblins or ogres, you know, they have snotlings. The Chromantic team also got 7 points. And only there are three teams with a rostered player losses this week. That's very interesting. And on the oral table, we have <clears throat> top tables didn't get any points, but Goblins and Necromantic team get closer to the top group. And not seeing Goblins higher than this is also nice for the Goblin team. Probably that may be also the result of the coaching by the Goblin team. Maybe he's trying to play more safely. And yeah, we will see. I'm expecting at least more than 30 points after this week. As you can see, after week 8, we make a big jump. I, I expect another jump here, hopefully. Let's see. How about the TV league? This week we have, we, we share. We see two teams are sharing the first spot. Lizards and Necromantic team. They are making a good competition on here. Necromantic team started with a big difference, but Lizard team slowly improved their TV so far, and they are still improving. They never went down. Yeah, they never went down. They are always improving. They continue like this. I think they will have a safe spot. We have orcs keeping their dwarves increased, ogres increased. And by the way, yeah. By the way, this is not ordered. Yep. Let's order it immediately. I'm very sorry. Mm. Oh, column 10. Z to A. Yeah. Dwarves, Ogres and Orcs. High House. No big difference on these teams. There is a 100k jump on the Chaos team. There's a 50k drop. Chaos Dwarves. They lost two leveled up players. Important jump for the human team. They spent all their treasure, I guess, this week to buy some blitzers or other positionals. There is an important jump for the Wood Elves. Probably the same happened. They bought some players. Nick Nurgle team increased some value and Goblin team came to the last position, which is tactically also correct for them. It's not a shame. So, yeah, we will see. Best of luck for the next week. Let's see. And I think we can continue with the results and also the level ups for the teams. First match of the week versus Skaven and Wood Elves. Two fast teams played each other and Wood Elves got the win 3 to 1. Congratulations to the T Cult. Uh, when we check the numbers roughly, the chaos suffered on both sides are very close. Casualties suffered are also very close. Uh, Wood Elves managed to get two serves that can be a critical and they expelled one of their players. The hitting power of the teams when you compare and there is also Eldriel for the Wood Elves. Hmm. He is an important player to 
get into the cages with the hypnogaze. But ab apart from that, the three man has might blow tackle and he got two casts. Might blow and block, sorry. And he got two casts. Block tackle, War Dancer got one cast. The touchdowns came two of them from the linemen, trying to get level ups on them, improve them probably. And other one from the catcher, to, from the fast catcher. Maybe it was a one turn touchdown, maybe. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. And the lineman level up. Okay, let's check immediately what's the level up. And it's a dodge. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. When we see the situation for the scaven, the mighty blow tackle got only one cast. I think that's a low. That's low when you're playing against AV7. You expect more than this, obviously. And some, you know, there are some soft targets in the Blue Delph team. So probably we can, we, I think we can say that was a luckier removal game for the Blue Delphs and they reflected this on the score. That's what I can comment on these numbers probably. Number of blocks, not too big difference. Armor broken, similar. Uh, less blocks, less blocks by Skaven, but more breaks. But when you check the number of total, it is 9 to 9, KO plus Cass. So, yeah. Congratulations to Woodhouse again. It's a tough match. Any, any team can any could win this match, I think. Both teams are fast. One double skull or numbers advantage, obviously, can bring the win in this kind of games. Any games it can bring. And did we check any level ups for the scale? No. Okay. Let's continue with the second match. High elves got a win against the orcs. That's nice for the elves. And number of blocks. Uh, slightly more for the orcs, that's understandable. Armor broken is 17. That's too much armor broken for the high elves. And only three armor breaks for the orcs. Chaos suffered four, Cast suffered five, but still they managed to win the match. That's interesting. That's interesting, really. Six passes, one completion. completion. That's another interesting thing. So five times it should be failed, right? Very interesting. And when we check the numbers, the one touchdown from the fast catcher, other one is from a fresh lineman, and there is no level up for the high elves. And for the orcs, there is a thrower level up that can be interesting. Casualties, as you can see, coming from mostly Mighty Blow players. And Black Orcs got two, and Blitzers got two. Pylon only got, Pylon Tackle got only one cast. It's a very well distributed SPP. Another touchdown on the thrower, and also MVP went to him. Yeah, let's see the level up for the Orcs. Is taken already. Mm, plus movement, it is already there, right? So he didn't choose the level up yet. Probably it's a block, isn't it? You you expect your thrower to be safe to keep the ball. I think probably it can be a block or a stat increase if he can draw. We will see. And the third match of the match, it's a big surprise for me. 2-1 win for the Ogres. It's a fantastic result for the Ogres, obviously. When we check the numbers, number of blocks are very close to each other. That's not very surprising. Ogres also have potential to hit. Armor breaks suffered is higher on the Ogre side. That's also not very surprising. They have snotlings. And, but the removal suffered. 6 chaos suffered to 3 cast suffered. 
two chaos suffered on the chaos dwarves and four casualties suffered on them and ogres killed one player i think that's a bit heavy on the chaos dwarves side if the removals are the hobgoblins it is not very surprising two of them are like that and one blocker dead probably another removal is abhorred so maybe it was also an important injury on an important player it is hard to comment about it now and this injury removal that obviously it sucks for the chaos dwarves leveled up blockers are always nice especially guard might blow if they can have claw they are already they are already okay now apart and up after this they get stunned firm to be more annoying yeah yeah very nice win for the for the for the ogres and no serious injury nothing happened one level up on the ogre let's see the result for the ogres what is the level up which player was that craig charles craig charles gets grab grab is always a ta tactical skill can be very useful sometimes especially when you pack around the sidelines you can organize some interesting serves or you can increase your hitting potential with the grab yeah it is not bad but if you have money it is not bad also to recycle some fresh ogres i think yeah how about how about the chaos dwarves is there any interesting process progress nothing uh, this hobgoblin should be sacked this new blocker should be bought yeah nothing very interesting here let's continue with the next match war demon versus a boronate human versus nurgle it's a one one both teams uh, human teams theory was much more lower before this match and number of blocks when we compare that's a huge difference 59 blocks from nurgle team that's a big number i think we could expect more armor breaks here this is also not too high against 21 block five chaos suffered and only one casualty suffered that can be a critical aspect of, about the game especially if the chaos rolls are also helpful and human team killed a loss to one player it's a loner lineman so it is not a real loss for the team and ashdown came from the kiwi hero he is the hero of the team really really hero of the team blotch strength four can save you in some nasty critical situations that's very helpful the extra strength and both teams got level up and this level up will be very interesting to see let's check that first of all human team the hero gets kickoff return it is helpful it's helpful it's nice helps you to uh, make your cage earlier get closer to the ball after the kick can help you against some tricky fast teams before it can help you to get you know sometimes they separate you on the backside from your front line kick off return helps to uh, make this situation more steady in your offensive drives yeah that's nice and how about nurgle team got one beast of nurgle level up and the pastigor level up that's gonna be interesting to see only casualty came from might blow claw that makes sense but obviously this team needs more removals and they need a dp <laughs> and extra rotors as soon as i think they have more money more economy we can invest on more rotors maybe i think maybe he doesn't need extra pastigors i don't know 
I don't play with Nurgles too much. Almost none. I played for like 10 games maybe in CCL before. So I cannot really comment it, but you need some falling players there because they are very cheap. And falling is an important aspect of the game, especially group falls with DP. Yeah, let's check the level ups for the beast and the Pastigor Phosphor. All right. It is uh, already got the level up. Beast of Norgo. No, no, he didn't choose yet. Tentacles already there, right? Yeah, sorry. I thought you also get tentacles as a level up, sorry. So he didn't choose the level up yet. Also, Phosphor has tackle and he still has to tackle. All right, all right. We will see next week. No problem. And for the... For the human team, we already checked. Let's continue with the next match. Goblins versus Dwarves. About this match, we have some assist from Hellenic. Thank you very much to Hellenic. I really appreciate that. He sent some notes. His notes about the game. Let's check roughly. Then we can we can also check his notes and comment about these notes. And in this match, we see 52 blocks from Dwarves. That's really... Not very surprising. That's high, but not very surprising. Broken armor is not too high, though. But the removals are too much. I think this is normal, sorry. But uh, this number of removals may be not very normal. Probably not. Of course, not easy to comment directly like this. You really don't know if it is a might blow hit, tackle hit, whatever. Piling on. Yeah. And Dwarves suffered one KO and one cast. Dwarves got one kill. It is the troll. Yeah, and let's check roughly. Two touchdowns came from one fast blister and one runner. Not very interesting. As you can expect. Two fast players. Rose Slayer got one cast. Blocker and another three blockers helped with some casts. Blocker got a level up. Balili is the guard. Balili got the uh, got the guard skill. That's very nice. And for the for the goblins losing this troll, maybe I would prefer losing this troll instead. But after guard, it is not a very big loss, but it is an economic loss for the team. You can always hire, you know, loner trolls if you have too big TV difference with extra 30k. There is a, another economical loss here, but you can still keep him for the next week. If you if you probably after buying a new troll, they will need to keep this goblin for some dangerous business. And let's continue with the uh, notes from the Hellenic. I already reviewed these notes before, and yeah, I agree. It is a very hard ma matchup for the for the goblins, and early losing the guard troll, it's a very very big important loss. The trolls are not very very special players, but they are road blockers, and they got hit sometimes, you know, and they are also screening goblins in in some conditions. So it's a big loss very early to losing him. So DP falls with multiple assists. One MNG. Stun's really not very helpful. I agree. So after that condition, not a very difficult drive for the Dwarves and they got turn 8 touchdown. The important critical part is turn 8 throw teammate. Because this Goblin team has a very good potential for the one turn touchdown, Agility 5 and Agility 4 Goblins, but they failed with only one movement 
and it is because of his minus movement stat bust that really sucks unlucky second half looks like it's an unlucky start for the goblins it's a double skull and you know you need to take these hits sometimes uh, hard to comment about these uh, with these notes but obviously that's very unlucky but looks like the wars also couldn't get the ball immediately they then the ball is scattered again and goblins got the ball but probably after that point uh, the wars started to get more removals and with some extra pressure they got the ball back again and they scored the 2-0 it is it is a, not a surprising result with block tackle removal skills dwarves are always annoying if you cannot get some early removals against the dwarves with the goblins and if you cannot score your one turn touchdown case it is very hard to deal with dwarves for the goblins yeah so is there any level up no level up for the goblins let's continue with the next match next match is between lizards and dark elves this is the first loss of the season for the lizards let's check roughly and uh, when we check the casualties suffered it is the same 2-2 two, two, and 1-1 one, one. number of blocks are higher for the lizards i think after these numbers we can say lizards couldn't get enough removals in this match hubris was on the field as an inducement and there's no important loss for the two teams the sprint blizzard got two touchdowns and the level up a sure feat would be probably a nice choice after sprint let's check what is the level up And it's a leap. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Maybe for one third touchdown or attacking cages in any in any situation it can help. Probably I will take sure feet, but obviously, and especially you already have one ball second. This may be to leap behind the screen. Or the one-turn touchdowns maybe maybe okay and anything else to comment about this match and the lizards touchdown come from the good skink and they got only one cast from the might below saurus obviously that's not enough to deal with the elves especially when you have a piling on saurus if it is maybe removed very early in the match it can be effective we don't know how the casualties happened how the apples are used that's also an important factor to comment actually congratulations to the mountain that's a very critical win also for the division next matches if the lizards cannot start to win again then maybe we can see a top position change after this loss last match of the make of the week two clove teams one side is very very loaded with high tv necromantics versus chaos 2-0 win number of blocks both sides high but chaos got really too many blocks 61 blocks and hard to comment about armor breaks but that's too close casualties suffered from the necro is big and this is the critical injury of the week obviously imperatore suffers an armor loss that that's a really that's a bad armor bust that's a bad injury for the wolf you don't want to see this kind of stat bust on your important players because of this armor bust you can lose him early on the field in the match you you may see he's dying because of this you know armor loss that sucks for them 
Zombie, there is a level up zombie. And let's check immediately. What was his name? Dr. Entropy. That's a block. All right. And for the Chaos team, we got these nuts. The beast man got the level up. And he got the block. Okay, normal choices. That makes sense. Yeah, and let's continue with the new week. New week uh, predictions. First match of the week versus War Demon and between War Demon and Kate Carr, human team versus Skaven. Human team is trying to get closer or keep try to keep their position also, it also makes sense. Versus Skaven, Skaven is trying to make a jump in this group. That's gonna be that's gonna be let's check the TV difference. Same TV, both team, very interesting. The ball carrier is very solid on the human team. Lodge strength for sure hands. There is a tackle plus agility alignment. That's an interesting also level up to see no block so far, no wrestle. Maybe next skill will be wrestle. Can be a nice ball sacker. There's a strip ball blotch guard. And fourth blitzer also entered to Scott. And there's only one catcher. And when we check the Skaven team, Skaven team obviously and they're missing their one turner this week. That's an important thing. I think after this loss, I think we will see a human team, a human win. I will say I will say 2-1 win for the for the humans in this match. Yeah. So let's continue with the next match. Ogres versus dwarves. Last week it was a similar match. It was Chaos Dwarves. But this time I'm not sure the TV difference exactly, but Ogre team, obviously, if they can, if the Ogres do a good job, they can also deal with this team. Why not? Dwarf teams are generally more, uh, their TV is less bloaty. So we may see a critical wizard in this match, 50k. 60k here, so 110k. We may see a critical wizard and it can change the situation in the game. And ogres are unfortunately never very reliable. So I will say a 1 0 win for the dwarves in this match. But ogres, I have to say, if the ogres win this match, I won't be very surprised. They are doing a great job so far in this season. And next match is High Elves versus Lizards. Lizards are still at the top position. And High Elves are trying to get close to the top. Get a better position in the top second position group. And 7 points difference in possible 9 points to take. I will not be very surprising. I think... I think High Elves with Wizards can do a similar job that Dark Elves did last week. So I will say a 2-1 win. And there's more TV difference because of this extra cash. So I will win a 2-1 win for the, Liz for the High Elves. I also want to see a more, you know, more close competition in this in division. So I hope we can see much more closer points and last week's can be more enjoyable and next match between t cold and necromantic team joyous necromantics there is an important tv difference the wood of team suffering some important players i think that's very rough for them that's very rough for them they will have some inducements obviously 
Imperatore is missing this week. That's a very fortunate situation for the Wood Elves. Are the other players are enough? I think they're good enough. I think Necromantic team will continue to their winning record. I will say a 2-1 win for the Necromantics. Wood Elves will score one touchdown, I think, surely. And next match between between Orcs and Chaos. Uh, let's check Orcs. First of all, Orcs, as you can remember, they are mighty blow focused team. And when we see a TV difference, Chaos team got about 270. We may see but one warrior is missing this match. Yeah, that can affect the situation. Mighty blow close. If they can do a good job early in the game, we may see an interesting result in this match, I think. It is this uh, Riot Pitch Invasion Cancelled Stadium. And Orcs are slightly behind the second position group. I think a draw will not be very surprising here. I will say a 1-1 draw. But I hope to see a win from the Chaos. I have to say that. And next match, Chaos Dwarves against Dark Chaos. Chaos Dwarves are doing not a nice job so far in the season. They also got a removal wise unlucky matches, obviously, and that, that affects too much the results. They will have some inducements, but this Dark Elf team, especially this Witch Elf, is a very critical player. Blitzers, there's a mighty blow Blitzer, so can hunt some Hobgoblins. Mighty blow claw, obviously it is nice, but not uh, very, very effective. Blood sure hand against strip ball can be effective. Some DP falls with bribe, maybe we can also see. So, I think, I think a Chaos Dwarf team will do better this week. Yeah, I will say a 1 0 win for the Chaos Dwarfs. And the last match of the week, Nurgle versus Goblin. Disturbing presence really uh, annoying for the Goblins when they want to do a one-turn touchdown place. And especially this team really needs to make one turns. They have Agility 5, Agility 4. They will try it if you give them the option. You, we will see if the Nurgle team can distribute their disturbing presence very effectively. It's gonna be it, and it's also in the Nurgle Stadium. Nurgle team has two tackles, one with plus agility. Mighty Blow Claw can do some job. The Beast has block. That's very rough. Another rough match. A baby Nurgle is not very, very annoying. But after these level ups, especially on the, especially they get more blocks, tackles, they become very annoying. We will see, but probably it's going to be a win, I think, for the Nurgle. A Goblin win will be very fun to see, but I will say a 2-1 win for the Goblins, uh, for the Nurgle. I think Goblin team will manage to score one touchdown. And... Probably it will end as a 2-1 win. So I finished my predictions. Please don't forget to fill your predictions. It's always fun to check who said what, who got the highest points. And yeah, that's all for the week. Best of luck for your games. And don't forget to try to have fun. This is we play for fun, never forget. If you have stress, if you don't, if you get angry sometimes, it happens to everybody. But try to remember, it's just for fun. And hope you enjoy your games. See you next week. My situation is still very busy.
unfortunately i hardly found the time to make this recap very sorry i cannot give you more in, enough importance for the matches but i will try to do my best and we will see next we will see next week how it continue see you next week okay bye bye